Hello and welcome, I'm JD and today I want to have a look at the second faction of ships that were previewed not too long ago by the development team. So before we do that, I just want to make it clear that I'm getting the information and the visuals from Eridanus Industries uh, devlog number 25 missiles away. So if you haven't um, gone across to their YouTube channel that's from the developers, uh, make sure that you do subscribe, give them that notification bell so that you can receive the devlogs the minute they come out as they usually contain very interesting thoughts on why things have unfolded as well as a little teasers of things to come. Also credit has to go to Papa Panda as well, who was a concept artist for these ships. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter if you like. So the second faction of ships will be the OSP or the Outer Systems Protectorate, and they will play completely different to the current faction in the game being the Alliance. Now I won't go into the detail as to why the two factions are at war uh, currently. I'll link the lore document down below uh, in the description that you can read for yourself. Later on I do hope to do some lore videos, so I'll save that for there. So currently the Alliance has six classes of ships. They have corvettes, frigates, destroyers, light cruisers, heavy cruisers, and battleships. And we know that carriers are on the roadmap, so eventually they'll have seven. Now, the OSB will be completely asymmetric to uh, the Alliance, and they won't have a comparable one-to-one -one for OSP ships as opposed to the Alliance. And so from Devlog 25, we know that the OSP will have a cruiser class, then their main brawling ships will be the line ships, then their faster, smaller craft will be called clippers. And so all of their ships will fit into one of those three classes. So first up is the Acelo class cruiser. So this is the predecessor of the current Axford class uh, of the Alliance. And so the purpose of this cruiser is to be the command and control ship. It should be able to go uh, head to head with the larger size um, ships of the Alliance. However, I imagine that they would be quite limited as they do come from a mothboard fleet. Again, so I imagine that they're not going to be uh, something that you'll take a lot of. Uh, it'll really be maybe one per fleet, uh, I guess, in the, the settings of the law. And then the other ships then provide that mainstay combat power where the OSP have been able to uh, refit and redesign their civilian vessels to support the war effort. The intent that was given to Papa Panda as the concept artist by the development team was to take the current Axford Heavy Cruiser and turn it back 100 years. And so we can see the very distinct similarities between the two, as well as the fact that it also looks a little bit older in terms of the communications arrays at the back. So knowing that this is still all work in progress and then likely to change, I just want to have a look at a few of the different um, mount options that we may have. So first starting on the side, and this is replicated on both sides, is that we can see that we're likely to get a size 2 and a size 1 mount uh, on both the left and the right hand side. So you'll be able to mount all your EWA um, point defense options like the defenders and the rebounds. And then you've got the larger mounts for those uh, new point defense options such as the stonewall. So that'll be on both the right hand side and on the left hand side. And then if we have a look at the main weapon systems that we're likely to get, so if we look at the top mounts of the cruiser, it's likely that we'll get three class four mounts. So you'll be able to mount those Mark 66s, the dual barreled, the dual barreled um, 450 millimeter cannons. You'll also be able to uh, then put your uh, vertical launch systems on them as well and the Mark 81 railgun. However, you won't be able to take the larger Mark 68 and the 82. So initially when I was looking from this angle, I thought that the front two mounts would be class four and that the rear mount would be a size two. It wasn't until I rotated around a little bit more that it then looked like that became a class four mount. So it'll either be a three or a four, but I'm fairly confident that's a four. One thing that I noticed whilst I was moving around this ship is that it also looked like we'll get a class one mount at the very, very top of the Axford. And you can only start to distinguish this because of the red line that is underneath the gray. And if we have a look at all the other mounts, they're all ringed by a red line. And then it has the actual gray mount where the weapon goes. So I have a feeling that we're going to get a, a size one mount up the top as well. Uh, and again, that's another point defense option. Or we potentially, again, could be used for something such as electronic warfare. And with all that, we haven't been shown underneath the ship. Uh, so we may get a couple mounts underneath as the Axford uh, has one mount underneath, but I can't distinctly see anything there. However, if you do have a look at the concept art, you can see that there looks like uh, two smaller mounts below, and then there's uh, a large frontal mount. So having a look at the model of the ship, you can see that there's a very flat cutout, and that could potentially be a class one or class two mount. However, you certainly won't be getting a larger mount than that, but I can't also see anything else that would indicate any other mount options. 
One thing to note is that the antenna is quite far forward, so I can imagine that being destroyed fairly quickly uh, within battle. It looks about the same size as an Axford and a, a Solomon. However, the antenna on the rear looks significantly larger, so potentially a new size um, that will be able to uh, support your uh, communications a little bit later on. But it looks like uh, two mounts, one so we'll definitely have redundancies uh, with antennas. It'll be interesting to know if the structure on the back provides any uh, in-game benefits or if it's all simply just our visuals at that point. And so the next thing I want to talk about is the line ships. So these are meant to be the mainstay brawlers of the OSP and they are centered around converted freighters and tankers. And with the differentiating point here being is that they are actually going to be modular. And so you can see on the screen the brown, the green, and the blue are actually three different sections. And so you'll have three bows, three midsections, and then three engines. And so when you add a line ship to your fleet in order to uh, add components to it, you'll get a randomized mix of these three. And so when you deploy your fleets, you're not going to have a uniform fleet. And so you're going to look like you've got a mix mash of uh, converted ships that don't have a uniform appearance that will then uh, go into battle, giving each of your fleets a very unique feel playing as the OSP. And so one of the challenges for the design team will be how do they balance the components and the mounts for each of these modules, but still give it something fresh and interesting so that we don't always have the exact same mounts on the same bows, the same midsections, and the same engines. And this was addressed by the developers. It's something that they uh, will need to do and that they do state everything will roughly have the same internal and external layouts. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see how that comes so whilst there's no other information that I can glean in terms of um, any hard points or anything like that, um, just have a look how in image one, you've got uh, some of the midsections remaining. And then as I move to sort of image two, that they then change based on the randomization that the development team has done. Finally, the last class of ships that the OSP will use will be the Clippers. As previously stated, these will be the fast, small scouts, roughly the size of Corvettes. Uh, they are the smaller ships that you would see operating on things such as mining colonies, etc. And I'll flash up just a little bit of the uh, artwork that Papa Panda has done uh, because we don't have any of the actual models uh, that were shown off in the devlog number 25, but the development team certainly has a vast array of options to uh, model in. I would be unsure of how many of these actually will uh, enter, whether we'll get uh, all of them or whether we'll see a um, couple, maybe, you know, uh, three, four, five of each of these uh, smaller clippers, but these won't be randomized. You'll be able to select the hull that you want. But we have been told that uh, clippers will focus uh, on spinal weapons and not on turreted weapons because it's uh, significantly more complex to maintain uh, weapons that are able to rotate and traverse, whereas spinal weapons that are already pre-existing and can be simply uh, bolted in into the hull of a ship. Um, at once you don't have to worry about things such as pass passenger capacity and you don't have to worry about things such as, uh, as cargo, you can then use all that space for a, a spinal weapon or a beam. And with each of the clippers being able to maybe provide a different function, uh, that would certainly be uh, an interesting way to go. We do know that as the OSP uses some Alliance equipment, but we should also be getting a OSP specific uh, group of weapons uh, and equipment. We don't know what those are uh, or how they'll operate. And so whilst we may be able to draw parallels and similarities from the Alliance equipment, uh, I imagine that we'll very much see um, weapons and equipment that have a basis rooted in a civilian and then modified so that they can go and be used in combat. All right, so that's all the information that we know about the OSP. It's been stated that this will be the next major update uh, and then conquest after that. So we'll be able to have the OSP factions for the multiplayer and the skirmish modes uh, and be able to play around with those before we then start to uh, see what the developers have in store for us or the, um, for the conquest game mode uh, that'll come at a later date. Although you can read the concept document for yourself to see how it'll start to play. Just be aware things will change in development and during testing. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and take care.